ഹലോ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഹാപ്പി ഹലോവീ Welcome back to my channel and as you must have guessed it right today's video is about a Halloween nail design and I can't wait to show you how I created this design and this is the first time I went out of the box and created something so let's do it together So before I start with the design so I just wanted to introduce you to a new acrylic brand that I found in the Pro Beauty exhibition so this brand is called IBI and I'll leave the Instagram links in the description box so in case if you guys wanted to purchase and try it then you can do that this is not a sponsored video i purchased it during that exhibition like i mentioned and as you can see this is a 120 ml uh, monomer and it's a, it's it was uh, 2000 something and then the powder which is again a uh, acrylic cover peach color it's a cover color uh, which means it's opaque uh, in nature and it's a peach color and again uh, as you can see the monomer bottle also normally it comes in a plastic bottle but uh, this one was like a really metallic bottle and well sealed and it's a ema monomer uh, it it doesn't have like a overwhelming smell or anything um, which is a good thing so you don't really feel like much uh, like high a uh, fragrance of this monomer and the powder again uh, normally the powders comes in like either plastic bottles or like you know acrylic uh, bottles but this is like an actual glass bottle and well sealed as you can see there is like an uh, like a aluminum kind of sealing and then again there is another layer of sealing uh, so uh, well packed product i must say uh, but uh, it's a premium range product now i'll tell you how it works and stuff like that so here i'm opening the powder and that's the color and i poured a little monomer in the container i mean the dip and dish and then i tried to pick up a bead and when i picked up the bead um, uh, so that's when you can actually feel how the product is so when you're going to work you will feel you will understand how the consistency how the acrylic works because every every band has like a different texture to it and uh, when you test it that's when you are going to realize how they are like to work with okay so whenever you buy something new you have to like do a little you know hands on practice to get the feel of it so here i am using my number 10 kolinsky brush from cards and then i'm going to just pick up a bead and show you how it looks after picking up the bead i realized uh, this has like a very creamy texture it's uh, Uh, similar to the brand i tried earlier uh, which is snt beauty has a similar kind of texture and it's not uh, fast setting neither it's slow setting it's in the middle so if you're an absolute beginner this may not be something that you wanted to try but if you have a little bit of experience you know how to work with the acrylic then this is something that you can try like i said it's expensive so if you're not Uh, if you don't have like uh, experience then i don't recommend it but if you have a little bit of experience then definitely you can buy you get that extra time it has a very creamy texture like i mentioned so this is it now let's start with the actual extension process So here I have done the dry manicure offline and uh, uh, now I'm going to attach the foam. So for the foam fitting first I started peeling off the uh, sticker from the foam and then I picked up that small piece and attached it right behind the foam. So this way our foam will have like a extra strength around the free edge area and then I close the foam from the front side and I keep the back side of the foam completely open at this stage and then I open the foam and then I measure the corners or the edges of the natural nails of the client and this is an important step because uh, because we need to uh, make a cut uh, based on the corners of the natural nails and that's when we will be able to kind of uh, fold the foam in a round pipe shape so if that is not there then uh, the foam won't be like really round in shape and then when you build the extension it might look like a, a duck nail so the free edge will be wider than the nail plate so that's why we make this cut and then uh, we attach the foam so what i did was i measured the uh, corners you can take a mental note or you can use a marker to mark it 
or then you can just use the way i did using the scissors you can mark the corners and then hold the client's finger and then put it inside the or underneath the nails and make sure that the foam is straight not uh, you know tilted to the left side or right side it has to be straight when you look from the side view uh, this uh, angle so it should be like straight to the nail plate and then if you have doubt you can turn the fingers and see from the back side as well once you are satisfied you start pinching from the nail growth point and then eventually start to make it like a really round pipe shape the way i'm doing so this is the area where you have to be like really careful when you pinch it exactly this area where i'm pinching right now so make it really round and the foam should always be inside the nail plate it should not be like outside to the nail plate okay if you do that then you will have like a wide free edge area and your nail plate will be smaller and your free edge will be wider okay so i hope this helps so now the foam is ready so every time i do the foam fitting and nail uh, product application i always do one by one or max to max i do two fingers at a time uh, because we keep on moving the fingers and also we don't want to you know misalign the foam once it's off then we have to restart or use a new foam so rather than doing that Uh, we do one by one that's that's my personal preference so now it's time for us to do the product application so here i took a bead and i always start from the free edge i follow the either three bead application depending how long i want the nails or i start with like one bead application sometimes but mostly it's either two bead or three bead application so first with the first bead what i do is i connect the product with the free edge and then um, you know once i have that free edge ready the excess product i push down with the brush and i stretch it to the free edge area whatever length i wanted i do that so now if you see uh, where the product and the free edge the nail plate is connected i always keep that area really thin so if you see you don't see uh, like a bulky edge uh, around the free edge area make sure that's like really blended with the nail plate and at the same time the corners has to be connected with the uh, uh, acrylic powder or the bead that we are using and then eventually you can stretch so as you can see the product is giving me enough time to you know stretch and work with it's not like really like fast and getting dried up no i still have enough time to work with it um so that that's one point i wanted to add so now that the product is nice and set or i leveled it up now it's time for us to do the second bead so i did not fasten the video clip here so that you can see how much time it takes so always be patient take your time and do a good application so that later you don't have to spend so much time in filing and shaping so if you build a nice and smooth uh, application then your filing shaping that time you can save okay so this is the second bead i placed it right behind the first one and then i moved it side to side and as soon as it's on the corner i blend it i always start blending from the sides first because we don't want that product to get on to the skin and then i blend it and once i am done with the blending you don't see the difference between first bead and second bead it is a blended it looks like like a one say straight bead now it comes to the third bead which is our cuticle bead so before applying the cuticle you can always do like a little push back of the cuticle so that uh, you have like a open cuticle and then you can go as close as to the skin and this will give you like a nice sealed cuticle area and it will be a clean application so it won't run into the skin another thing when you are applying the cuticle see how small bead i picked up because i only have a little space there so i don't want too much product and uh, again consistency so both these things needs to be taken care of and as soon as i move it to side to side and i immediately blend it and uh, uh, again third bead is where we build the apex area so just make sure that you have enough product right consistency right placement and right blending once all these things are together then you will have like a very neat and clean application as you can see on the screen okay so that's our application now i'm going to repeat the same thing again on other figures as well
Now I'm done with all the five fingers, it's time for us to file and shape. So uh, for the filing and shaping, I'm using a 180 grit, I'll be using the 180 side for the filing. I always start with the side walls and then the free edge and then I start with the overall filing. So I'm not going to bore you with the filing part, uh, but I just wanted to uh, show, show you the uh, steps that we follow. So here I'm filing and shaping. Now for the design, I'm going to start with a skull. So this is the first time I think I'm doing a 3D skull with acrylic. So first part, I'm using a pencil to draw like kind of an outline for the skull. And then I'm going to use a white acrylic and I'm going to build that skull. Okay. So first I started filling up the round uh, using white acrylic so um, I really don't have any plans here so I'm just going with the flow um, like I said it was the first time trying something like this but I think after doing this I got an idea of what to do what not to do but maybe next time I'll do something a little bit more better uh, but I was quite happy with the end result even though it was not like a out of the box skull but still I was kind of happy. Um, so yeah, this part I think you can just watch and see what I'm doing uh, nothing much to really explain it's just using acrylic I'm going to create that skull so let's just watch it together
so the skull is ready now we are going to create a knife so for that i'm using a foam and a clear top coat so i'm going to apply two layers and i'm going to cure it so i applied one layer cured it and then i applied one more layer uh, in a little thicker uh, layers and then i cured it so i didn't want it like to be too thick or either too thin uh, because we are going to cut and create a knife So after curing it, I am going to cut this into a knife shape. So I am using a cuticle scissor and now I am going to cut out a knife shape. So here what I did, the mistake that I did, I did not, I was so excited that I didn't realize the length of my nail. So my knife was a little longer than it should be. Uh, but um, anyways, um, this was like for a uh, special occasion so it was not going to stay there for a longer time so the longer knife was okay but uh, when you are doing it if you are doing it uh, just make sure make sure to consider the length of your nails and then accordingly you cut the knife okay so using the top coat i cut uh, the knife shape and then i use the file to uh, like uh, give a crisp shape Once the knife was ready, I used this uh, metallic silver gel to paint it and make it like a real knife effect and that's what I'm doing. I'm using Born Pretty's meta silver metallic gel paint to do the painting work and for the handle I used the black gel. So the knife is ready. Now let's add some blood stains to it so for that i'm using a red uh, gel polish and i picked up a small liner brush and i'm going to add some blood to the knives so to give a scary effect so here it is very simple technique it just randomly place the blood um, i did not put the blood on both the sides only one side i think i did it and then i attached to the nail At lastly I added some more uh, designs into the other fingers so in the pinky I wrote help and on the index finger I added some blood stains and stuff and on the thumb I added some blood drops and that's it uh, for this Halloween I guess so um, what do you think what do you guys think about this design I think it was pretty cool um, and obviously I might do one more uh, you know 3d sculpting uh, skull uh, but uh, I love the way the knife turned out and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well if you like it um, uh, don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and leave your comments suggestions etc and uh, I'll see you soon on my next video until then stay safe stay happy